Right, uh, we come to item number 13, uh, which is feedback on the discussion document uh, from the Minister uh, Nanaia Mahuta on changes to uh, the Māori ward and constituency. Um, I've, I'll um, put the, I'll, I'll ask uh, for um, a, a mover and a seconder for this paper, please. Does anybody would like to move that? I'll move Mr Chair, Linda Cooper. Councillor Happy Cooper to moving Collins. and Councillor Collins to second. And uh, we've got Warwick and Rose to uh, to give us, I think they've got a PowerPoint presentation, which hopefully will come up. Um, but this uh, this is an answer to a, a discussion document that the, we're making submissions to. And of course, when the legislation is introduced, which we think may be uh, later this year, or if it slips early next year, uh, there'll be a further opportunity to make submissions um, on the legislation. Uh, you'll note too that uh, this attaches a submission from the Independent Māori Statutory Board. Uh, it's appropriate that we attach it. It's their own submission. They are independent. Um, I don't think um, we need to, to comment on their submission. Uh, it is their views and their presentation of it. And uh, hopefully you should have received um, a summary of, of the local board submissions uh, on this paper that, that came in late. So you probably, I think, only received it either last night or this morning. And uh, um, there's quite a lot of, uh, while well, about 16 of the boards, I think, uh, uh, made comments on it. Uh, there are a lot of sections of it that they haven't commented on. But I think perhaps if we start with the presentation um, from Warwick and Rose, uh, and then I'll open it up for questions and, and then for comment. Um, Warwick, are you leading this or is it Rose? Uh, tēnā koutou, uh, Your Worship and members. Um, I'll uh, speak to the first few uh, slides on the presentation and uh, Rose will say a few words on the final slide. Uh, the purpose of the presentation is really just to encapsulate uh, briefly what the main points are. Uh, the discussion document uh, has been uh, published by the Department of Internal Affairs uh, with submissions closing tomorrow on the 27th. Uh, it's been a bit tight uh, time-wise and uh, we need to acknowledge uh, that local boards have uh, put A into G and have got together and, and uh, forwarded their submissions, but it, it hasn't been, they, we haven't received them in time uh, to include them uh, within the report itself. So, sorry to interrupt, yes. Warwick. We haven't, we can't see the slides at the moment. Um, are you able to uh, put those up? No. Uh, oh, here we go. If I go. It's loading, so that's a good sign. Yep, we're, 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 we're good. Thank you. Very good. So the time frame with the discussion document, uh, the information that we, we, um, we get out of the uh, cabinet paper, the minister's cabinet paper, is uh, the intention is to have a bill before parliament uh, November this year and then through a select committee in March next year with the final legislation in place uh, at the end of 2022, uh, with the aim being uh, that everything will be in place for the incoming councils to make decisions. Um, not part of the current discussion document, but will be part of the bill, will be changes to Auckland legislation, uh, which will, among other things, remove the limit of 20 councillors. Um, so, and we just need to note that uh, we can make submissions on the bill at the later stage. Um, I've mentioned about the local boards and uh, I'll say a few words about their submissions towards the end. And uh, you've all already alerted people to the IMSB submission uh, being attached. The discussion document itself um, raises uh, a few specific issues. Um, it's, the context of the discussion document is in terms of legislation being passed earlier this year under urgency to remove the polls. Uh, but uh, there are other aspects uh, to the whole process of deciding Māori wards that uh, have not been addressed yet. And that's what the, these are the issues that the dis discussion document raises. 
<clears throat> briefly, should councils be required to consider Māori wards, and if so, how often? Uh, should Māori ward decision making continue to take place in two stages? Should councils be required to engage with their community when considering Māori wards? And if so, what type of engagement? What role should the Local Government Commission have in relation to Māori wards? What should a council be required to do if it wishes to no longer have any Māori wards? And how long should they stay in place? Should councils retain the ability to initiate binding polls on general wards? <clears throat> uh, in, in attempting to dr draft a submission uh, to, to, to the discussion document, we found it very helpful to fall back onto the, the, the formal position of the governing body, uh, which was uh, noted in this particular resolution here, which says that the governing body <clears throat> receive the report and reiterate to government the position adopted by council in 2015, supporting the need for legislative change to allow council to determine the number of members of the governing body and subject to that, agree in principle to establish a Māori ward and request for a consistent policy regarding Māori representation in line with legislation governing the composition of Parliament. So the answers to the questions posed in the discussion document are based on applying the parliamentary model to the Auckland situation. So with parliamentary elections, uh, Māori electorates are established under legislation, uh, specifically the Electoral Act. That legislation can be amended by Parliament through the normal amendment procedures, but is not reviewed on a periodic basis. The names, number and boundaries are reviewed by the Representation Commission, along with the reviews of all general electorates. And the formula for establishing the number of seats is essentially the same as the formula councils use. It's based on the Māori electoral population. And just to illustrate that, if you use the same formula, you take the Māori electoral population for the whole of the country, divide it by the total electoral population for the whole of the country, and apply that to the total number of electorate seats in Parliament being 72, you end up with seven Māori electorate seats. Warwick, if I may, if you could just go to full screen and you do that by using on the top left hand um, buttons um, on your black screen there, there's a button called use slideshow and I think that'll take you to full screen. That's the one. Um, oh, is that it? No, that's made it worse, I'm sorry. Is that not it? We've, we've lost it altogether now. Um, Perhaps if you go back, it's just, I think members were finding it hard to read. It yeah. was too small. Um, if you're having trouble with that, maybe we could ask, uh, oh, hang on. No, it's coming oh, it's on. It's good. Is that it? It's good. Thank you. All right. There you go. Uh, so I've lost the uh, buttons for going backwards and forwards. Here we are. And now we've um, that's where we were. Submission number one: Should councils be required to consider Maori wards? Um, just some comments around this. The questions asked in the DIA discussion document are quite specific, and the DIA has even got a tick box multi-choice answer form for those who want to use it. However, when you start thinking through some of the issues, further questions crop up. For example, one of the issues that they ask about is about public consultation and the questions that raises. Uh, the questions it, it raises in your mind include what questions would the council be asking the public? What matters should a council take into account when considering submissions and making decisions and so on? As a result, in order to answer some of these wider questions, there's a fairly wide ranging comment within the report itself. And it also leads to our suggested response to issue one. The Local Electoral Act itself does not provide a policy rationale to assist a council making decisions about whether to establish one or more <clears throat> Māori wards. In comparison, the Local Government Act does have a treaty section and that provides a rationale for the provisions in that act that require Māori participation. <clears throat> 
And so the draft submission proposes some sort of treaty section is included in the Local Electoral Act that is similar to the one in the Local Government Act. The wording of that would be <clears throat> left up to the Crown and Parliament. And uh, on the slide there, I've included for uh, your reference the one that is in the Local Government Act, uh, which states, in order to recognise and respect the Crown's responsibility to take appropriate account of the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi and to maintain and improve opportunities for Māori to contribute to local government decision-making processes, parts two and six provide principles and requirements for local authorities that are intended to facilitate participation by Māori in local authority decision-making processes. And so uh, what we're envisaging here is, is something similar like that in the Local Electoral Act, but applying to the provisions for Māori wards. Uh, <clears throat> just going very quickly now through uh, the responses to the other questions, timing of decisions, Māori ward names, boundaries and members would be reviewed as part of the regular review of representation arrangements. And the decision to establish Māori wards uh, would be an entirely separate decision made by resolution following consultation and not reviewed on a periodic basis. And that's, that's applying the parliamentary model. The answer to question issue number three, opportunities for public input. A decision to establish one or more Māori wards should be made by council resolution following public consultation. This mirrors the parliamentary process where such a change would require legislative amendment and public consultation through a select committee. Those on the Māori roll are affected more than those who are on the general roll when a Māori ward is established. And just to explain that, uh, people who are currently on the Māori roll, they've shifted there because they want to be able to uh, be able to vote for candidates standing for parliamentary Māori electorates. Um, if we establish a Māori ward, those same people will be required uh, to vote for candidates standing for a Māori ward. Uh, it could be useful to hear from them as to whether that's what they want. The answer to issue number four, which is decision-making rights and role for the Local Government Commission, it's applying the parliamentary model again, uh, where electorates are reviewed periodically by the Representation Commission. So we say the Local Government Commission should have a sim similar role to that of the Representation Commission. It should review proposals made through a representation review, including boundaries and names of any Māori wards, but should not make decisions about establishing or disestablishing Māori representation through Māori wards. And issue number five uh, poses the question of discontinuance. Uh, how should councils be able to disestablish wards? Uh, so our submission basically says that based on the parliamentary model in which legislative change is required to disestablish Māori electorates, and which includes a public consultation process, a council could also decide by resolution following public consultation to disestablish Māori wards. Uh, there's a final question that they ask <coughs> about types of polls. Um, the, the section 9 in the Local Electoral Act provides for referendums and polls. Um, they, it's never been used uh, to decide questions about ward boundaries and so on. And so uh, we would support just making it very clear that they sh that's, that that section should not be used for those types of decisions. Uh, what it is used for, it's not used often, but it is used for more policy type decisions relating to council decision making. Uh, just to note briefly, the, the local board submissions, um, <clears throat> They have done a splendid job in getting comments back to us. Um, a, a large amount of support uh, for Māori representation. Um, I would need to say most of the boards have favoured an approach based on general wards so that uh, the establishment of Māori wards would be reviewed every six years. Uh, but that's not our submission. Uh, our submission is more based on what Parliament does. And I'll now invite Rose to speak to the IMSB um, attachment uh, and to the proposed working group. 
Thank you, Warwick. Um, just to note, members, that the joint group that um, you have in the resolutions in front of you was agreed to at the governing body and IMSB joint meeting on the 21st of June this year um, and was part of discussion about issues of significance for which Māori representation in local government is an issue of significance of the IMSB. Um, we've provided a draft terms of reference for you there um, and in that it has the purpose being the, to overview and direct the work to determine matters in relation to elected Māori representation on council matters and to report back periodically to the joint GB and IMSB meetings. So that was taken directly from um, the resolution to establish this joint group um, back on the 21st of June. Um, the first meeting of this group is being arranged as we speak and is planned for some time before the 20th of September, which is when the governing body and IMSB joint meeting um, come together again. Um, the councillors uh, um, on this working uh, this joint group are councillors Filipina, Dalton and Henderson. And from the IMSB, um, Chair David Taipere, Deputy Chair To Henere and Member Wilson. Um, happy to take questions about um, the paper and um, I'm handing it back to you. Um, okay, thank you very much, uh, Warwick and Rose, and thank you for the work that went into this. I think what you've done, you've taken our resolution from last time to try to make what we do locally consistent with the, the long-standing tradition of having Māori seats at a parliamentary level. I think that helps um, with the political argument for those that um, don't don't want to don't want anything to do with Maori wards, uh, we are simply applying at a local level what has long been the case at the central government level, and you've answered the questions in your submission consistent with that. So that's helpful. Um, I'll open it up now for questions, and I have. I have three already. Uh, the first in the name of Councillor Linda Cooper. Um, two questions. The first one is when you talked about reviewing Māori wards every six years, do you mean reviewing whether they still are in existence or just reviewing the size, shape, name, that type of thing, um, or, or whether you need more, you know, it increases the councillor level? because of increase in population. In, our, in the council submission, we've tried to make it very clear uh, that the decision making is, is, is two separate parts to it. Um, there's a dis totally separate part to do with whether or not a council establishes a Māori ward. And that is made by resolution and is only unmade uh, when a council decides to do it. It's not periodically reviewed. What is periodically reviewed is what is periodically reviewed right now with general wards, and that's the shape of the wards, the number that's of clear. members in the yep. ward. That's and clear now. Thanks for that. And the other question is, is there some way, I mean, to me, I don't honestly see why you need to refer, you know, test, consult with the whole region when a Māori ward would only be set up for... Um, people on the Māori roll. So to me, it only affects those people. So why, you know, the whole flaw about the whole referendum, this is that you've always got more non-Māori than Māori in your population. So it's so hard to get one going under the current legislation and it's actually inherently unjust um, because people who will have no effect on really get to say yes or no. So is there some way, if you're going out to consultation, that you can only consult with people on the Māori roll? Uh, we haven't addressed what uh, specifically what type of consultation, whether we'd use a special consultative procedure, which would mean public, public notification and anybody can make a submission, or whether it would be more targeted. Uh, that's probably a detail uh, that's better addressed further down the track, say in submissions to the bill. So that wouldn't yeah. then, I mean, if it was put in the bill, then we wouldn't have to decide that. That's what I'm saying. Is there some way we can put that in the submission? Because 
I mean, my view is, it doesn't make any difference to anybody else. It's actually for Māori to have representation. And, and the people on the roll are the only people that are going to vote. But it, but it doesn't take away from any other non-Māori representation. So is there some way that can, that can be put in our submission if, if the rest of the governing body agreed? Uh, well, we could put it in a submission and uh, fully follow the logic and very sympathetic to it, but um, it, it would then move our submission away from the parliamentary model because decisions that Parliament makes uh, do go to select committees and there is a public consultation process. I understand, but I guess I just don't I just don't know how we put that sentiment in. But you're saying it could go somewhere else, like to select committee or something like that. I mean, maybe the committee who are appointed might want to consider that in, in their thoughts about this. Um, sorry, just to explain that, um, the submission we're making is based on the parliamentary model for establishing Maori electorates. And the Maori electorates are contained within legislation, uh, which is uh, adopted by Parliament uh, through the proper process. And that process includes a public submission process and uh, it's that, that part of changes to legislation is open to the to the whole of the public to make submissions. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that, Warwick. Thank you. It was just I'm wondering how that is. I know I don't want to mess up the the way the methodology of of the submission, but I guess I put it out there, and if that's something you think is uh -huh. better addressed later on in the consultative procedure maybe that's what i'm saying is if, if it can't be dealt with in submission maybe um this working group could just take it on board somehow and it's taken forward at a later stage councillor cooper i think warwick also probably did mean to say that if this meeting de decides that it wants it to add to the submission at this stage you could depart from the parliamentary model um formula and kind of court it all that we've put up there if if that's the decision of this meeting, we could it we could include it in this submission. Yes, yeah, thank thank you, Rose. I, I think we <laughs> there, there's a certain um, uh, protection in saying we are modelling the parliamentary uh, model of doing it, uh, and if you start to diverge from that, then there'll be other people that ask you to make other changes uh, that might not. Uh, might not find favour with the with the majority of people on council. I understand where Linda's coming from, um, but I think it's very hard to avoid. Uh, you're making a change in representation. Um, yes, you want to hear, particularly from the Maori community, uh, but it'd be hard to say the rest of the community couldn't comment. Anyway, sorry, I shouldn't be intervening. No, that's that. okay, Mr Chair. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Shane Henderson, question. Shane, have you got your mic on? Or Shane, have you gone for a coffee? <laughs> okay, I'll come back to Shane in a minute. Um, Councillor Pippacoon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tēnā korua, Rose and Warwick. Um, it's fantastic work, as always, and very thorough, and very happy to support the submission and the steps towards um, Māori wards. I just had a couple of questions. Um, one, the first one, is there a quick way of explaining um, why the analysis does not include um, Māori subdivisions for local boards? Um, I can't explain why the discussion document doesn't include it. Um, I have alerted DIA to the fact that some of our local boards will be raising it, and some have in their submissions. Uh, sorry, sorry, just a bit of way of putting it. Is there a sort of a quick way of explaining why it doesn't really work to have Māori subdivisions on local boards? And I think, I mean, the Waitamata local board submission kind of covers it, but it's sort of in the in the covering paper. It's sort of left as silent in terms of why that's not I mean we could be picking that up as a other comments it's possibly worth looking at um, if say so we were still in the legacy situation with the regional council and TLAs then the regional council 
uh, would be looking at Māori seats, and so would each TLA, and, and you'd, you'd have the total number of Māori seats for the region would be more than just what it is for the regional council. And uh, you might apply the same sort of thinking to uh, the governing body and, and the local boards, except that, um, and I haven't really looked into this, um, there might be some issues to do with electoral rolls. I think we have to use the, the same electoral roll for all of the elections, and so uh, we can't sort of split the role up into this, this local board has a general role and a Māori role and this local board doesn't, it just has one role and so on. Um, that could create some difficulties. Oh, thank you. And I just, if I may, Mr. Juice, one other um, part I just around the differences with the IMSB submission and whether any of the IMSB submission has influenced our submission. Um, we worked with IMSB staff and we shared our drafts as they progressed and we, we accepted uh, that the final versions would probably not totally match and they haven't, uh, but uh, we, we did share thoughts, yes. So is it able, are you able just to say what are the key differences? Um, well, one that comes to mind is in terms of the question about should councils be required uh, to consider Māori wards and if so, how often um, the IMSB submission says yes, every council should be required and those, in terms of how often, only those councils who haven't got Māori wards and so it's, uh, the emphasis is a bit different. Yeah, and I, I think one of the other points is just about once they're established, um, IMSB are pushing back to say that it could be reviewed every six years because it's a it becomes then a treaty issue, and I think that's probably a very valid point. Um, so I'll just I'll just leave it at that there, but I think there's some good points that um, IMSB have have raised that might need to be considered further through the consultation process. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think it's good though that um, you know we, we, we make sure that IMSB, the first word in it, is independent. Um, they're not going to necessarily always match up with us, but um, it's good that we're attaching this submission in my viewpoint so that their perspective can be seen uh, yes. alongside ours. Thank you. Um, and sorry, I just wanted to, could I just quickly just run my comment? I'm just also yeah, very supportive of um, those representative, representatives who um, the governing body, thank you. Thank you, councillors, for putting your names forward. Um, that's really great that that came out of the, the joint meeting. Namahi. Thank you, councillor. And we're back to councillor Shane Henderson, who uh, has got his internet sorted out now, I think. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, a, a continuing problem, I'm afraid. Um, and compounded by the fact that councillor Coombe has stolen my questions, but I've got some follow-ups um, on, on the same lines, because uh, I know that four local boards explicitly said that they would like uh, Māori representation. Yeah. So I guess my first question is, what do you do with a situation where local boards ask for Māori wards? Um, I, th I think that uh, that's useful information for the Department of Internal Affairs to have and to, to share with the Minister and, and for political decisions to be made about that. Um, we, haven't, we haven't taken a position on that in terms of the draft submission we've put together for the governing body. Cool, thanks. You um, are attaching the submissions, yes, so, so that's the, right. the local, but a little bit like the Independent Māori Statutory Board, we're not telling the local boards what to do, but they're having the opportunity to say what might suit them. So that viewpoint will be expressed in the submission via the local board submissions. Quite Sorry, right. Back to you, Shane. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, uh, and just to follow up, you know, if we are going down the path of essentially being silent on local boards um, and we do adopt Māori ward councillors, is there a risk that they're going to have a workload that's just really, really, really high? Um, and how would we support? I suppose this is kind of down the track a little bit, but how would we support that workload? It's a bit, it's a bit hard to, to say at this point. Um, one thing to acknowledge, though, is that the Auckland region is very large, and that's what the ward area would be. Hmm. 
here that the mayor can identify with that problem. <laughs> um, uh, I think that is a, a question that we'll need to tackle in due course, Shane, but it, it may not be relevant particularly to the submission on the, on the questions that the, the minister has asked. Okay, yeah. um, sorry, have you finished? Well, I was going to say, if you wanted to do comments together, uh, Mayor, I've got yep. a very brief one. Yep, no, um, please go ahead. I'll yeah, thank you. Look, I just wanted to thank everybody, um, assuming this does pass. I'm really, really excited to be involved, um, and I think it's something that's extremely important, obviously, and I don't want to kind of lecture colleagues on the point, but I think it, it's just such a great advance um, and also such a great awareness of our treaty obligations and a whole bunch of other things. And yeah, no, just thank you. Really excited to be involved. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor John Watson, last question. Yeah, 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 thanks. Um, my, my first question goes to uh, 4.7, the opportunities for public input. I, I just seek a bit of clarification on that. Um, a decision to establish one or more Maori wards should be made by council resolution following public consultation, and that's mirroring the, the parliamentary process. So um, the, the question is, that consultation uh, would be by council and would be through one of our um, you know, normal forms of consultation, or would that be a wider public consultation across New Zealand in, re in response to legislation? Oh, each council consulting with the community. Uh, okay, so and we we don't obviously at this stage have any um, you know any more precise idea as to what form that will take in light of some of the various options that have put up. No, it'll be a general, no, be a general be, consultation. Yes, it would be general, uh, presumably public notification, uh, inviting people to make submissions, um, some sort of hearing process. But uh, I just note that the, the joint working group that's been set up uh, will probably look at some of this detail. Okay, um, Warwick, you you referred to the you know the resolution of 2017 and particularly the phrase and request for a consistent policy regarding uh, Maori representation in line with uh, legislation governing uh, the composition of Parliament. And there's already you know a few points been made in respect of that and the protection that it's based on the parliamentary model. One of the provisos of that, um, that discussion, that meeting, um, and implied, I think, in part in that section that's been quoted, is the position of, of the IMSB then in terms of, of overall representation. And I know that in our submission, there doesn't appear to be any reference to um, you know, the fact that I think Auckland alone has, you know, nine uh, members of the IMSB who have sit on council committees and have have voting rights, but which, as I said, I don't think is duplicated anywhere else. So I stand to be corrected on that. Um, how, if we are looking at um, representation in line with, um, you know, government or, or the Maori seats, there's obviously... Um, you know, a, a glaring disconnect there that is certainly going to get picked up in, in public uh, consultation if I follow on from that. Um, how do you propose to do that or, or are you proposing to follow the, the IMSB submission where, which really just seeks to, um, to say that, that um, these are kind of sep separate responsibilities? That, that don't impact upon each other, which you know, I, I doubt if that will be held uh, in terms of uh, voting rights and representative rights. So, so how, how are you uh, proposing to handle the, the existence of the IMSB uh, uh, in, the, in the Auckland context, which I, I believe is unique? Uh, through you, Your Worship, um, certainly acknowledge the concern and the issue. Uh, but it's actually not a subject that's on the table at this point in time. Uh, we've been asked specifically to comment on the process around setting up Māori wards. Uh, when the bill comes through, it will contain some Auckland-related legislation, but the future of the IMSB won't be part of that legislation either. So 
I can't really answer your question there, Councillor. Okay, thank you, Warwick. I appreciate the distinction you're drawing, and I can see that that's reflected in the process that we're responding to. I guess then, just in the same way as a number of councillors highlighted that very big elephant in the room in terms of the wider issue of representation. The consistency, if we're looking at representation and what is the driver of this legislation elsewhere in New Zealand, I think a strong argument can be put up and, in fact, has been captured in some of the local board feedback to us that we have a unique situation where there is representation at the moment that doesn't exist elsewhere, and that should be taken into account when viewing this matter as a whole as it applies to Auckland. Well, there are two scenarios that come to mind. One is where the government proposes a change to the legislation in terms of the IMSB, and then we would need to turn our minds to our comments on that. The other scenario is where the council, some future council here, decides that it's going to establish a Māori ward and invites public consultation, and some of the submissions might point out the very thing that you're pointing out, and the council might take into account when it's making its decision to establish a Māori ward. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, thanks, Rock. I reserve the right to speak on this, Mr Mayor. Yeah, thanks, John. As Warwick's pointed out, that's not what they've asked for in terms of our submissions on their discussion paper, but it will be a discussion to have at some point in the future. In the end, however, it's the government that created the IMSB, and while we could make representations on what we thought its appropriate future was, it's still the government that will end up making that decision, but I don't think it'll be part... It's clearly not part of this particular submission because it doesn't fit within the context of the questions asked. Councillor Greg Sayers, question. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Sorry, this is a bit of a 101 question, but in terms of the impact of the number of councillors' seats under the current wording, do we have to lose one, or are we asking to gain another position? The position of the governing body at the moment is to ask to be able to create an additional seat. At the moment, we're limited to 20, and if we can create an additional seat, then we would have 21 total. One of those would be elected from a Māori ward, and there would be 20 elected from general wards, and I think the reason the governing body wishes to pursue that line of thinking is that that sort of keeps the current situation going. Yeah, thank you, Warwick. Some other questions. I guess just supplementary to that, my just thought around that, Warwick, is if they don't do it, then if they don't create the extra seat, there might be an even stronger reason why we need to go up for general public consultation for the whole of Auckland. The review, the removal, I read in one of the papers, I think it was, I can't remember the exact clause, 4.10 or 12 or something like that, that the opportunity for referenda had been, didn't exist. Is that, could you just clarify if that's something new, or has that always been in the case that you couldn't go to a referendum decision in the future? It used to be the case that if a council passed a resolution to establish a Māori ward, there was the possibility for a petition from 10%, I think, of electors requiring a referendum to be held. The experience of councils that did pass resolutions to establish Māori wards was that 
um, usually the were referenda held and usually the referenda uh, overturned the council decision. And so the minister earlier this year uh, removed that provision uh, for conducting referenda uh, out of the legislation. Okay, well, that's very helpful. So just, just, just so I'm clear on it. So that, those referenda were more in a reaction to uh, a decision that the council made rather than referenda being used to establish uh, uh, um, desire. So uh, yes, that is correct. Post, it's post rather than pre. That is correct, and that's actually the essence of issue number six, I think it is about um, section nine in the Local Electoral Act, which provides for polls and referenda. And it's just to say that it should be clear uh, that 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 provision should not be used for making these sort of decisions. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And my last question is just uh, probably picking up on Councillor Watson's uh, line of questioning, just to summarise for us uh, the position of the Independent uh, Māori Statutory Board around how they see their position, um, how their position would be versus the Ward Council's position. How do they, um, could you just summarise their, their position there, how they see those two, the difference between those two roles? Uh, well, the IMSB role doesn't change. And so that would continue, the IMSB would continue to have the ability to appoint two members to any committee of the governing body which dealt with the management and stewardship of natural and physical resources. Uh, what would be different is that at the governing body table, there would be a member elected uh, from a Māori ward. Uh, and the, I guess the, ma the main differences conceptually between the two is that one has a, an electoral mandate, uh, the others are appointed through a selection process. Yeah, very okay. good. That's, that, that's very helpful, Mark. And uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, for those that haven't seen it, 65 uh, new cases today. Uh, the positive out of that is that it uh, would be a, a appear to be the beginning of a levelling off of the trend, but um, yeah, it might be premature to be predicting that. Uh, actually, Richard just said 68, um, I thought it was 65. Anyway, uh, either way, that would be, it's been going up by about 50% each day until today where it's going up much more marginally. So we might take a, a positive from that. Okay, look, um, we've completed the uh, questions. Uh, uh, there's a question of whether anybody wants to make a comment uh, at this point. Um, John, you'd indicated that you might want to comment on it, and then we'll take lunch after we've had this vote. Yes, now thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just just a couple of um, quick points in relation to this item. Um, I, I guess in the first instance, in our submission, um, you know, I'm somewhat reassured by the, the opportunity for for public input, um, given that you know the, the, the opportunity via referenda, which which did have uh, shortcomings to it, um, uh, is going or is or is gone or in the process of going, um, because I think that's going to be uh, very important, and I, and I don't necessarily hold with the view that uh, that feedback uh, is will be judged strictly along uh, you know numeric lines, uh, as always there will be. A judgment made on the, the quality of submission. So I just don't necessarily uh, fear that just, uh, you know, the, the, the non Maori group, for want of a better word, will just uh, swamp the process. Um, I, I believe there'll be some very relevant uh, submissions that, that come in in due course there. In terms of the, 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 the bigger question I, I raised uh, with regards to you know, representation as proposed uh, in this paper, you know, being in line with the legislation governing the composition of Parliament, um, if you take it in the strict lines of the formulaic um, principle being outlined in the paper, yes, that might be right. But I, I think in terms of the, the wider issue in, uh, in Maori representation in Parliament and how it seems to be uh, emerging here, that there is a contradiction. And, and I don't think that contradiction is is, is um, effectively combated, and you know, through the IMSB submission, which is a good submission, but you know, which 
makes the point that the you know the statutory responsibilities of the board differ from those enabled by the Maori wards. I think in practical terms, um, both are looking to advance the interests of Maori in Auckland um, and ensuring the Auckland Council group acts in that way as as in their mission. So. I'm sure that's going to be something that's that's picked up as things go on. Uh, as far as the local board input goes into this, with the, the local boards I represent, they've both uh, included commentary here. The Hibiscus and Bays local board, um, all that really comes out of them is that they don't have a unanimous view, um, but they do make a preference for the IMSB and its current function fulfilling that role. Upper Harbour is, is against the proposal, um, and, and again, a complementary of the role that um, that the IMSB uh, play in in this. So, in, in in the current arrangement. So, I think certainly um, for myself and others, and, and I suspect uh, a number of the pu public, when it gets down to it, will, will be um, not so much uh, occupied with the formulaic um, division of. The population and, and whether it amounts in one or two uh, people being a possibility for the Maori wards, it'll be in this, to me, what to me is this rather stunning contradiction of, of already having um, nine uh, people who uh, at various points all have voting rights in Auckland Council committees with the ab uh, abs uh, exception of the of the governing body and um, you know as much as uh, we are looking to draw that distinction between what we're responding to here in terms of this process, that uh, for me anyway is, is an obvious um, feature that, 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 that will come into play at, at the appropriate time. Um, so just, just finally, Mr Mayor, uh, finishing off then, I notice even uh, in terms of the Maori view of representation has, has been around for some time now. If we go back to 2010, um, you know, one uh, very fine uh, Maori uh, leader, Narimu Blair, was, was certainly looking for a, a different path forward in terms of Maori representation at that time, and there was a big march down uh, Queen Street in support of that. And you know, the the the, the extent to which uh, Maori themselves think is the most appropriate form of representation and and, and capturing their voice. Uh, isn't necessarily uh, unanimous either, so that no doubt will get teased out in the in the submission process. I, I guess today this is a process issue, um, um, so the grounds for I guess voting against it in terms of the issues I've raised aren't strictly relevant, and, and I guess that the phrase that the local board submissions are being attached, which capture some of the concerns that that I've got. Um, make it possible at this point anyway to to support these uh, these various resolutions that have been put up. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. And finally, a comment from Councillor Greg Sayers. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, really picking up on what Councillor Watson's just uh, just said, and also you know take, being considerate of uh, Warwick's advice around the fact that the Independent Maori Secretary Board isn't kind of part of this. Uh, remit. Uh, my comment would be that I, you know, I think I feel that that's an oversight, probably because Auckland Council is different uh, from the rest of the country, and that hasn't been grasped. Uh, I would have thought uh, disestablishing the uh, Maori statutory boards uh, would be uh, required because they would effectively become redundant, and uh, if there were Maori wards, and I, you know, I remain so I remain deeply uncomfortable with unelected Māori representation when there's a mechanism for Māori elected representation with Māori wards. Uh, my other comment would be it's a bit of a pity that the uh, that Auckland can't uh, make a decision to enable a Māori ward through a referendum, but with that said, and that not being a possibility, I would support the establishment of uh, Māori wards for uh, based on population of people on the Māori roll. Um, uh, that would be on the provision that there remains adherence to the principles of, you know, the, um, what, they, what they call it, the one person, one vote principles, and also 
the principle that all people are equal and every person should have equal representation in voting, Mr Mayor. So that, that, that would be my feedback to the officers. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a final comment. It's a request for a comment from Councillor Desley Simpson. Oh, kia ora, um, Mr Mayor. And look, I realise it's probably between us and lunch, so I'll keep it brief. Um, from my perspective, I want us to thank the staff uh, for all the work that they've done around this. Um, this is about Māori and it's not so much about um, Pākehā. So I went to the um, to Māori in my ward, i.e. Ngāti Whātua, just to get their take on this. And uh, the feedback for them, from them to me was that wards don't represent a treaty-based relationship uh, with Ngāti Whātua or Rāke or reflect the intended partnership founded on the Tupu Whenua or gifting of the most central isthmus from Te Kauau to Hobson. Wards are not a substitute for a Ngāti Whadu Arake or Auckland Council relationship. So if a Māori or Ngāti Whadua get elected to one through a Pākehā election process kapai, but that does not come close to what our Tupuna envisaged. So I'm not going to be supporting A, um, because it's not supported by um, the conversation I've had with Ngāti Whātua. I'm, I'm supportive of B, and I'm definitely supportive of C, and I thank those councillors who've put their hands up uh, to work more around that but I just wanted um, those who are listening today to understand that's why my vote would be against a thank you. Um, thank you uh, Councillor Simpson. Um, look in reply um, the much of the commentary has been on the IMSB um, but uh, as Councillor Watson acknowledged that's not the issue before us today um, that may be an issue in the future when we work out the compatibility of the role of having a directly elected uh, Maori representative and uh, what what role the IMSB would play in, in that instance. I think there are lots of arguments around that that needs to be teased out um, and uh, that will happen in due course, though the decision of course uh, it primarily will be one uh, of those that have the power to change the legislation and whether they wish to or not. What we're looking at here today is uh, how we might go about uh, the direct election of a Maori ward or potentially wards if, um, if the population size uh, grew to the point that uh, that would warrant a, a second ward uh, or if we increase the number of councillors. Uh, I support the principle of a direct election uh, by by Māori onto our council. Uh, we are not, we have never been well represented in terms of Māori representation uh, on our council uh, or for that matter uh, on our boards. Uh, I think that uh, Warwick and Rose have done a good job. I think the principle of maintaining a, a parallel system or a system modelled on the, the central government system that's been in place for for 180 years or whatever uh, is is easily justifiable, uh, and I and I support it on that basis. Um, this is not the last word on this legislation. Of course, we will have the opportunity to make submissions directly on the legislation uh, when it's introduced in in November. Um, but I support the work that's been done, and I thank our officers for it. Um, I'll put it to the vote on voices, but if uh, uh, okay, so somebody's asked for a, uh, a vote on division, for a division on A, Councillor Darby. So um, I'll do that. I'll take uh, A separately and we'll do the vote on division. Then I'll take B, C and D on the voices. So uh, if I can ask Sandra to uh, please um, uh, read out the votes for a division on uh, recommendation A. Thank you. Councillors, you are voting on Clause A. Mayor Goff. Aye. Councillor Bartley. Four. Councillor Casey. Yes. Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Aye. Councillor Collins. Four. Councillor Coon. Aye. 
Councillor Cooper. Aye. Councillor Dalton. Aye. Councillor Darby. Four. Councillor Filipina. Aye. Councillor Fletcher. Four. Councillor Henderson. Aye. Councillor Hills. Aye. Got it. Councillor Mulholland. We'll come back to Councillor Mulholland, who is on the phone. Councillor Newman. Yes. Councillor Sayers. Against. Councillor Simpson. Against. Councillor Stewart. Against. Councillor Walker. Against. Councillor Watson. Sorry, against. Councillor Young. Oh. Councillor Mulholland, are you online? Sandra? Yes, is your against. vote? Yes or no, please. Against. Thank you. So that is carried, 15 votes to 6. Okay, um, we'll now uh, vote on the voices on recommendations B, C and D. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Uh, I declare uh, the recommendations as a whole carried. Thank you very much for that. It's um, what I'd suggest is that we come back uh, um, after lunch at, um, let's, let's make it uh, two o'clock. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you at two o'clock.